Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Come On Now, the podcast. That's happening now. We're going live right now. We said, let's do this live. I hope you watch. We hope you jump on live with us. But if you don't, we will have the recording post episode. Yep. But jump on live with us. We have the, I'm going to have the comments open in the chat. I want to, y'all can send me a question if you have, or a thought. If you want to tell me I'm a dick, I don't care. If you want to tell Nikki's a dick, he cares more than I do. He gets, he's sensitive like that. <laughs> but I am Rudy Rodriguez Showman. I got Nick Taylor, three-time Grey Cup champion from the CFL. We are jumping in live. We thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. We want to say what's up to Ben Daniel Podcast. Thank yep. you for posting our video and reviewing it. That was dope as hell, man. I watch you all the time. Love your stuff. We thank everyone for the support as we continue to grow this channel. Got a few words, Nick, before we jump in. Did you miss me? I know y'all been getting Rudy ranting, 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 and talking his damn ass off, you know. But, you know, we are a trio, sometimes a duo, <laughs> sometimes singular. Um, but I'm back, man. Me and Rudy going to keep rocking out, man. We're going to talk about sports. We're going to argue. Um, most of the times we don't see the eye to eye. Sometimes we do. And, you know, Rudy can really get in my ear and annoy the shit out of me. But, you know, we're here now, man. It's been a while, man. It's, just, it's, it's glad to see you again, my brother. And I call Rudy my brother, guys, because he's literally, literally like my big brother. No matter what the race says, he's... Like what the color of our skin says. Like I see him. He's one of us, guys. He's not racist. He's not racist, guys. He's one of us. I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, man. Rudy, <laughs> Rudy, <laughs> Rudy drives past five gas stations and goes to the one with the cheapest gas all the time. Well, and who doesn't do that? <laughs> who doesn't? Other people. Who goes to an expensive gas station? Why would you do that? Other people. I mean, I don't have to do that in my Tesla, my, in my wife's Tesla, thankfully. But for my my Escalade, yeah, I got to go to the gas station, you know. Rudy eats pickle <laughs> eggs and hot no, sausage. No, fuck, no, I don't. <laughs> I've never had a – hot sausage was the most disgusting shit I ever Rudy saw as a kid. Pickle eggs and hot sausages, people. <laughs> I'm you, y'all. I like pickles, but I've never – that pickles, that hot sausage thing I used to see in the jar sitting in front of the in, – in the corner store, and I'm sitting here like – People are just sticking their hands in there, bro. Oh, my God. That yeah. just seems a little bit dirty, man. I mean, you know, yeah. no, not the messing. most sanitary I'm shit. Around, man. I'm just messing around. I, I really do miss my guy, Rudy, man. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we're able to talk and get on here and kick it a little bit more. Um, what are we diving into today, Rudy? We're freestyling. We are jumping into a topic that you love to, you love to talk about, <laughs> and that is quarterback pay. James uh, James Jones, that's his name. Yeah, the green, former player for the Green Bay Packers. He was yeah. on um undis what is that? Speak speak with with Joy and Lashawn McCoy and like was it Shady? Huh? Yeah, Shady, Shady and um Acho, who's out of his ever loving mind with some of the shit he says, which I will jump into after this because that just reminded me I saw something that Acho said which I thought was fucking crazy. James Jones, yeah, agrees with Nick Taylor. How long have he talked? He, he, I've been saying it though. I've been saying I was the first one who said this. I was literally the first person who said this about these quarterbacks getting this outstanding, outrageous amount of pay. Like you paying two a fifty five. Is two a tag a little blah 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 blah? <laughs> is he thirty million dollars better than Tyreek Hill? Fifty five million? No, because Tyreek oh. Hill. Tyreek Hill. Waddle, they make him. They make him better than he is. So when the quarterback is getting, who is not making the receivers better, and the receivers are making him better, how can you pay him as the upper echelon of these other quarterbacks who are getting paid that way? And secondly, all these quarterbacks shouldn't be getting, I know it's the market, and this is what the market is telling us to give them. But that don't mean that they're worth that amount of money. Um, We got who else got the money up? Uh, the guy from Jacksonville. What's my guy name? I can't even. Trevor Lawrence. 
Trevor Lawrence got paid. Is he up there with with Patrick Mahomes? Is he up there with Joe Burrow? Is he up there with Josh Allen? He's up there with with Lamar. Even Lamar, who has bad playoffs games, he's still an amazing quarterback. We will still ride and die with that guy. He still wins their games for them in the season. He wins their games. He go out there. He puts the team on the back. He's what the other teams are are making their game plans for. Lamar Jackson, like that's if you don't stop him, if you're not a person that the defensive coordinator say, hey, we have to stop that. We have to cut that head of the snake off to win the game. Then you shouldn't get paid what they're getting paid. I'm sorry. I, I'm happy for y'all. Y'all get to support y'all families and all that stuff. But like I said before, there should be a, 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 a upper echelon of quarterbacks to what they get paid. At the top, if, if anybody's getting paid more than Patrick Mahomes, it's a freaking problem. And and at, at that point right there is a problem. Like nobody should get paid more than him. But let's say somebody does sneak in and get paid more than him. Okay, maybe we can make an argument for Joe Burrow. We can make an argument for Lamar. We can make an argument for Josh Allen. We can make an argument for maybe Jalen Hurts. But after that, we cannot make an argument for anybody else. Now let's drop the tiers. If we're going to make that 55 million, 50 million, let's drop the tiers after that. Let's who, Who's in the 40 million tier? That's probably some of those quarterbacks that I just named. So he said, so what James Jones said was, he's happy for guys to get I'm paid. happy. I'm happy. He, he's he's but, happy for them. But, but that, and so what, sac- what sacrifice does it mean for these other guys on the team to bring in players to help you win? You have a guy like Tua, who he says is a forty million dollar quarterback, for and which I, I I think that would have been the franchise tag or close to it. You, you let I said, I said I said I said franchise tag. You him. let that play out. You franchise tag him. He hasn't proved enough. What he hasn't won the big games for you. He, I mean, let's say a Dolphin fans. Okay, we're gonna be like we're happy because it's better than what we've been the predicaments that we've been in since Dan Marino. Well, we had Jay Feeler, who was a game manager. We had Chad Pennington, but I like Chad. It's just that Chad was just a noodle arm, and he just got hurt a lot. But as an mm-hmm. intelligent and being able to get the ball out when you wanted to get it, throw it, get it out, and throw it across the zones, and and being able to read defense, Chad Pennington was a, a elite quarterback when it came to that. Now his arm strength wasn't like that. You know, those are little things that hurt him. And injuries hurt him. But so you don't want to go back to that. But shit, if you're gonna keep this guy just to be average, and now you have to build players around him to make him look better than you are and you're paying him more than, than he should be getting paid. Now you're really going to see what type of quarterback he is in a couple of years when you can't afford the rest of the players on your team. And that's why you start losing. They lost out on the best, one of the best, a top five D tackle in the league because they had to pay to him. That's the little problems that that create when you have to pay somebody more than they work at the position just because of the position. And now your rest of your team starts falling off. And can he make up for those posi- for that position? Can he make up for the D linemen not being as good as they would be if you had the, one of the best D linemen in the league? Can he make up for your secondary not being that great? Can he make up for your linebackers being average? Can he make up for your old linemen being okay? Can he make up for all those things? Only way he can make up for it is because sometimes he drops back and throws it to the guy out there at receiver who is faster than everybody on the field, and nobody can stop him, and he can catch a three yard a three-yard slant and take it 90 yards. But he's not throwing him open. He's already five yards open from cornerbacks. So, like, he's not a difference maker in a case where he can lead the team. So you don't give a quarterback or anybody who's – because if I was average, i get paid like the average player. But every other – but the quarterback, you can be average and get paid like a star or a top player in the world. So I don't – that's the part I don't get. So that's what's gonna have the Dolphins. Wait, why, why, why do that? Just wait, because you had time. You could have franchised him. He could have be a little salty, but he's been hurt. He's been inconsistent, and he can't be the the guy of the team. He hasn't shown that. He's shown that he can be a part of the team, but he hasn't shown that if if Tyreek get hurt and Waddle get hurt and he have to play with average court average receivers like a Tom Brady had to do for most of his career and make them look better than they are. He hasn't shown that. So you don't pay him like he can't do that. So Tom Brady had teams that should have been freaking terrible and offense should have been terrible with what the weapons they had around him. And he still managed to get those teams to eleven and five or twelve and four. Do you think do you think that this quarterback could do that? Y'all try to get rid of him at every moment that y'all could get rid of him. Y'all try to bring Tom Brady in or talk to Tom Brady or we try to go get Deshaun Watson. You tried every move to go get a different quarterback. 
But now you're telling me that this is the quarterback of the future and this is the guy that's going to lead us to a championship or lead the Dolphins to a championship, the first one since 50 years? Get the fuck out of here. I, I, I just I, I just don't agree with it, man. Um, And there's a lot of other quarterbacks that are getting paid more than they should be and they're messing up the whole roster of the team or getting better players around them to make them look better. And it's just a fact right now, and it's bull crap, and it's just what it is. And these owners, if you want to talk about extort, Rudy, you you call LeBron James getting his son in there extortion. It was. This is extortion of, of a quarterback who should be getting paid $20 million holding the team to, 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 to their neck, gun at their neck, to give them $50 million or fifty five because they're like, well, what else can we do? And, and, and the owners are backed into a corner, and they have to give them the money even to average quarterbacks. Now, that's more of a distortion than LeBron getting his son into the, to the team to be a freaking 12th man on the roster. Mm-hmm. I, I think I made a mistake with this stream. I, I, I'm, I don't see it playing. Oh, my Lord. God. I had, I, it says it here. I, I apologize, folks, because I thought I had it here. It's, it says it here. I'm just making sure because I can't see it live. I, it says it's connected. It says we're live recording. And then I'm on here trying to see how it's going, and I don't see nothing. This is weird. Uh, whatever. It, it, whatever it is, it is. Not a big deal. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We'll see. We'll keep, we'll keep going. Whatever it is, it is. No big deal. We'll just, it, it, not a problem. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, 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 I cannot stand these football contracts. I don't like the quarterback contracts. They're absolutely outrageous. Anyone that gets paid more than Patrick Mahomes, it's a joke to me. Um, he should be the highest paid quarterback until he retires, until some, someone else shows me that he is better. Than, than Mahomes, because at this point in time, there's no one better than Mahomes. Um, the, the contract with Trevor Lawrence is an embarrassment for $55 million a year. The contract oh with, with the contract that Jordan Love just got, an embarrassment. And the man's had one season of football. And, and half of a season. And half a season, because the first half, he wasn't very good. Second okay. half, he was really good. Okay. Second half, he was really good. The last six, eight games, he was great. The playoff, one playoff game, he was great. But even in the next playoff game, they lost because of him. And, um, own, and owners are getting are scared of like uh, they're, 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 they're scared because they're like, oh, if you don't pay them now, then you're gonna have to pay them way more later. Well, if you yeah. pay them now, you could be fucked up for later, and now you're in a bad contract for a long time, and now your team is being average when you could have been better, or you could sacrifice and 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 go down and, and let the ship go down a little bit, and then you find mm-hmm. the person that's the right quarterback. You more than likely know who's the right quarterback from the get go. Like mm-hmm. Daniel Jones getting forty million to Saquon getting twelve million. That makes any sense for the guy who's carrying the offense where the defensive coordinators are game planning around. They're not game planning for Daniel Jones. I've been in a in a in a in a locker room with a with a defensive coordinator or Rex Ryan. I'm gonna call out Rex Ryan name. I've been out there and they're about to play a team in a division and you're like, that quarterback fucking sucks. We're not worried about him. We're worried about the players around him. And you can guess who that quarterback was early in his career for a certain team in that division, who that might have been. But, yeah, that's who he called and, out. And, on, on which team? On the, on the Jets? So I was in the Jets locker room. I was on the Jets for a, a couple of months. And they were talking about quarterbacks in that division who sucks, who's not that good. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. Oh, he was worried about him. That, Tannehill became okay. He was later. terrible. But, but, he, but he became okay because he had Derrick Henry next to him in Tennessee. Yeah. In Miami, he sucked. But his numbers were all fluff for his numbers were all fluffed bullshit because we were always losing. And in the fourth quarter, he completes a few passes. And now people say, oh, look at his stats. He threw for 4,000 yards. Everybody throws for 4,000 yards and, and, and they have a post. And that's my point of uh, uh, what. These defensive coordinators or these people that are around the league or in the league think about most of these quarterbacks or half of these quarterbacks. I'm not worried about him. He sucks. We're looking at the film. The receiver's wide open. He can't make the read. He can't throw it over the zone. He can't throw the digs behind it. He can't make the throws or the plays when we need them. That's what most of these defensive coordinators think about some of these quarterbacks when you're giving them this money. Like, they're not game planning for dang. Daniel Jones. No, we're trying to stop Saquon Barkley because if we got to put eight in the box for him, now Daniel Jones might look okay because guess what? He's throwing against single coverage because my safety's all the way down here, five yards off the line of scrimmage trying to stop Saquon. And now you look so much better than you really are. That don't mean you're a good quarterback. <laughs> that means you're a benefactor of the real player that's really good. 
And now you're getting paid off of that. $25 more million than Saquon Barkley, and now Saquon playing for another team because he made a badass decision like that. That's the problem with these contracts to these quarterbacks because we're scared to, to make them wait for a year because the contract might blow up later on. Deal with that when we have to deal with it. And if the quarterback is real, you keep it real with him at the get-go and say, hey, if we sign you to this contract, we're not going to be able to get the players around you to make you look good. And now you're going to look bad. And now you're not going to get paid ever again after that. Now, if you get a good contract right here and then we can get good players around you, you can look good for the next 10 years. And nobody will ever know that you're as bad as that you are. <laughs> so, Pretty much. Like, like, what are we doing here, man? It's, it's getting ridiculous, man. Like, look at the guy in Atlanta. What's my guy name? Uh, they came from Minnesota, who's off Kirk, Kirk Cousins. His Achilles is all messed up. He gets a contract with Atlanta to get paid over there. Kirk Cousins is an okay quarterback. He can throw the ball, but he, what has he proven in the situations where you need him? Kirk Cousins get twenty five million. I'll be okay with that. Twenty twenty five million. So that's what the average barometer is. Jared Goff probably around thirty five, forty. I like him. Uh -huh. But come on, Daniel Jones should be at twelve million per year. Let's keep it real. Let's flip the contracts with him and Saquon for that team. That probably would worked out better for them. Okay, okay. Um, trying this live thing, I don't think it's working. I'm looking oh, at my side. I don't see you in it. But it's recording though. It's just recording me. I don't see you in it. Let me remove. I'm forget this. Well, ah, whatever. It is what it is. Let me take this crap off because I don't see you on it. It's weird. End it. Whatever. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Anyhow, yeah, I, I I completely agree. I, I'm sick of seeing the quarterbacks overpaid. I it, it costs players. You see what's happening in Dallas. They're not gonna pay Dak. He's gonna be gone next year. He'll be gone because they're not gonna pay him. They they, they have to pay guys that are actually deter deserving they don't buy you the money. Like they they have to buy, pay him the deserve you know, guys who deserve the money. He's not that type of player. Um he's a good player, but I tell you what, he's better than Tua. He's, I will he's, say that too. He's, he's better than Trevor Lawrence. Yes. Um, you know, so he's better than these guys, and, and yet he's getting absolutely fucked in, in, in this scenario, um, which I have a big problem with. But he's going to get paid a, next year. I have a major <laughs> problem with – and he's going to get – we'll get paid by somebody else because yeah. he's not going to get paid by the Cowboys. And, and it just gets tiresome to me because this is continuing to happen year in, year out. And I'm going to be real with you. Look, I, I, I'm not against guys getting paid money. No, but, but you should have, get paid I have a, for the value of what you but, did. or what. You... But, like, I'll give you an example. And this is this sounds like I'm a, a, a shill for owners. I'm not. But owners didn't become billionaires by owning sports teams. Back in the day, long time ago, owning a professional sports team was like owning a toy. You didn't make profit on having a sports team. You took losses. If you go even look at the Yankees in the 90s, I you say you like to watch old shit on YouTube. I know you're going to watch baseball. Go put on you watch baseball in the 90s. Put on, any, put on any Yankees game in the 90s in Yankee Stadium. When the Yankees won four straight World Series, late 90s, the stadium is empty. Empty. Like, no bullshit. There's 23,000 people there, 25. It wasn't until after that where you were seeing the Yankees filling up the stadium with 45,000 people, and now, obviously, in the new stadium, they're always full and the whole nine. But the stadium was largely empty in the 90s. 80s and 90s, 80s, completely empty because yeah. they weren't good. So these they were taking losses. They weren't making money. These These franchises weren't valued at... Seven billion dollars, like the Cowboys, or eight billion, like the Cowboys. I don't know what the actual value is uh, of, of, these, of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's see what it is right now. It's eight, nine point two billion. You know, th th it wasn't worth like that. New York Yankees is five, I think. Seven point five five is the most most highest valued baseball franchise. The Lakers. Um, I mean, Genie Buss okay. probably devalued it. 5.9. Okay. The Warriors are worth more, I think, actually. The Warriors are 8.2. So, it. yeah, maybe you win. <laughs> Winning yeah. changes things. Um, right, right now, yeah, the Warriors are number two. The Yankees are three. The Knicks are four at 7.43. The Lakers, it says 7.34. Uh, 
But you have – these teams weren't worth shit back then. So these guys weren't making money hand over fist. It wasn't until television deals started kicking in all over the place where owners are making a whole lot of money now off these teams. So now it's, well, I want my piece. Well, you're my employee. <laughs> Like, like, like keeping a buck. Yeah. You're my employee. You work for me. Without me, you don't exist. So all these guys who are becoming, what is, what's the word, um, generationally wealthy, LeBron, Tatum now, Jalen Brown, Curry. There's these ridiculous, I mean, Jalen Brown got five years, $300 million. Like, in what world does that make sense? He's not even, in many people's opinion, not the best player on his team. We think he is. But now Tatum just got more than him. And we don't think he's, and he's arguably not the best player on his team and didn't even win finals MVP or Eastern Conference finals MVP. So you have this dynamic that exists now where these guys are getting paid obscene amounts of money. Obscene. It's, it's, it's ridiculous how much money some of these guys get paid. And, and when, you, when you see scrubs... Okay, when I use the word scrub people, it compared to comparatively to the norm to the NBA player or the, the football not, player, not, 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 to, not to me. Not <laughs> to me. You're supposed to be what you are. But at the end of the day, I'm hearing some feedback. I don't know if that's from your microphone or not. Um you hear it now? Yeah. A little bit. But at the end of the day, like you're at the end of the day, it's like you Yeah, that feedback is killing me right now. Hold on. Uh, Give me one second. I may have to mute you while I talk. Coming back. Coming back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. You know, so with this generational wealth levels that they've created with these with these television deals, these players are way too empowered. You're still a fucking employee, man. And I hate that. And I hate to. And some people will turn into they're slaves. Fuck you, man. They're not slaves. They're Stop the slaves. Fuck that. Stop that. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Like, like, like when people make that type of commentary, I make compare, that one. like it's such, it's so unbelievably. Talk to a person that's 75, 80 years old, old who had a parent. Who may have been, and I know what they're that, trying to get at, but it's not the I, fucking same. It's then not I'm the a, same. Then I'm a slave to my job. I'm, everybody's a slave. If everyone's a slave to somebody. I'd rather, be, I'd rather be that slave that get paid fifty million than this slave that get paid not fifty million. Yeah, yeah. Like we need to stop this shit because this this, this conversation about calling someone a slave when they're making fifty million dollars a year to play basketball basketball or baseball or football no one gets paid for yeah football now too yes. like this is insanity you know don't offend people because the, the, that means the 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 ceo of uh, of Publix, everyone that works for him is a slave <laughs> like no like you're you are an employee that's what you are you don't own the league and that's why i have so much and that's why i had so many problems with this lebron shit with brawny you a, a billionaire owner bent over and said, "Okay, what you get what well, you want." It's a give and take. My employee. Yeah, it's a give and take a little bit. With it, just because only, only because I'm saying only because, I mean, if LeBron doesn't go play, who's going to come to watch it? Like they want to come. They, make, they, they make. They make. They will still fill their building. They up. make the league. About who's going to come watch? These top players so sold out for a decade. Top players make the league. I get the owners. They they got the they got the money. They got it rolling. But the players they brought they part to it now, and they deserve no, they deserve no. they deserve to be paid. The players did not create the television contracts. Sorry, no. Well, they wouldn't have the television contracts if they were coming to see. If it was a shit performance, it was nobody cared about what they were. Let, let, me, let me ask you, how, why, why did the WNBA just get a fucking two because of the NBA billion dollar a year, two point two billion dollars because of the NBA because of the NBA because they didn't get it themselves. Yes, because beyond Caitlin Clark, no one's watching that shit. Fuck league. Mm. No one's watching it. And and I just did a video on that shit as well, where where, where, where Cheryl Miller is on a crack pipe is sitting here saying the, the number should have been eight billion. No way. Like, you want your freaking mind. Like you're the fucking mind. No, it, 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 you're a charity case. You're a charity. If Caitlin Clark got hurt tomorrow, no one would watch the fucking game anymore. No, no it would be turned on. You're still a charity case. The NBA still does it, everything it, it, for it, 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 Preposterous. So 
I'm just sitting here saying, yes, players matter. Your employees matter. But do you pay your employees 50% of your profits? Of, I'm sorry, of your revenue, because it's not profits. In the NBA, it's revenue. That's why when the number is so fucking funny to me, when the M WNBA players are speaking, it's like, you make no profit. At all. At all. You haven't made profit in 27 years. The NBA makes profit. Yeah. <laughs> Yet the number is based on revenue. It's not based on profit. Why am I paying you half my revenue? Like, that's crazy to me. And look, they negotiated. They negotiated. It is what it is. But I will tell you. But I will tell you this: Who can afford to not work better? Who can afford for the NBA to cease operation tomorrow? No, the owners. The owners, exactly. So why do the owners have to bend their asses over every single time? You know, what? you were born in '87, I mean, right? It's, a, it's a negotiation. You were born in '87. Right? '88, '88, '88, '87. There was a strike. The NFL brought in scabs to play. Damn, I wish they do that now. People still watched. I wish they do it now. People still watch. I could go get my little fame as a NFL replacement. I'm just, there was a movie on that, you know. The yeah, replacement. I'd be like Falco. But people watch. People still <laughs> watch this shit. So it didn't matter who was on the field. It was just the, the it's the NFL. No, no one. Are you watching the UFL? No. No, that means. But, but you'll watch the NFL. You could put out dogs and you'd watch the NFL. Not me, but people would. I think of uh, I think it only could go so far. But NFL, but 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 what I'm saying is, professional sports owners don't need these teams. Mm -hmm. If they cease to exist, they still have their Jerry Jones is still an oil billionaire. Yeah, Ballmer in, with the Clippers is still worth 130 billion dollars. At this point, if they don't do it, somebody else will do it. So I guess that's that's I'm another. Not thing. Someone else won't. Do, well, you know, would be a, a poorer person because these are some of the richest people in the world. So. All I'm saying at the end of the day is they can afford to lose their lose their sport, their team, more than the player can afford to lose his job. Even though, I mean, if you want to be real, Michael Jordan made less money his entire career than LeBron's made in one season. Yeah. Until the last two years of Jordan's career. So TV deals did what exactly? TV deals are made by the owners. They're they're now and desperate and desperate broadcasters that like. What? How can you pay a league a bill? I, I, how much did they pay the NBA? It was like seventy six billion. Was that that I read? Talking about the uh, talking about Amazon. Yeah, like overall the whole deal was like a hundred six seventy some it, billion dollars. The modern, They're it, only drawing like a million people a game. They're not drawing. <laughs> Caitlin Clark's out drawing the NBA right Amazon, now. Amazon, Amazon just want to take over everything. They monopolize. I hate the Amazon. Th I hate the Amazon thing completely. It's a joke. The Amazon thing makes me sick because the Amazon thing. How many streaming services do I have to pay for? To, to watch basketball now. Like, to watch a playoff series. So it's it's different now because even League Pass, like, why do I need that when I could watch it on this one, this one, this one, this one? I'm paying $15 for each one. I'll folks, tell you what. Get, I'll folks, tell you what I'm going to watch it at. I'm going to tell you where I'm going to watch it at. And y'all not going to like it. Y'all ain't going to get no views or streams from it. But I ain't going to say nothing about that. I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, folks, I, I, don't, I don't advocate for this. But go get you a freaking jailbroke fire stick from someone you might know and see how you can work it out. Because? Because you're getting screwed right now screwed. by all these different... Because before we just had cable TV, you pay one price, and yada, 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 yada. You get all the channels. But now, you know, you got the little NBA little channel league pass you got to watch whatever you really want now it's I, like i i don't know what's going to happen yet but you have amazon prime i have prime i have prime because i yeah, watch I, prime. I watch mind you the price of prime has gone up every fucking year netflix i have netflix hulu i have i don't have hulu i have hulu for free my bad i have hulu because i have espn plus <laughs> disney and hulu's in there i have apple tv and I still have YouTube TV for TV. And you know what? how much YouTube TV costs when I got YouTube TV and, and I cut the cord on cable? It was, it was $45. It is 90 bucks now <laughs> in like five years. And you know what I still do have because I live in an HOA? I get cable. <laughs> so I get cable for free because it's part of my HOA through Hotwire, which sucks. Oh, my gosh. Um, I got YouTube TV, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney, Oh, I also have Peacock because I like to watch wrestling. Yeah. What's Peacock a part of? NBC. Yeah. So, yeah. 
the playoff game with the Dolphins and Chiefs was on Peacock last oh, year. What is Why is it not on CBS or Fox? And so you're you're killing people with all these subscription services, and it ends up. I was paying three hundred dollars a month for cable. I'm paying three hundred dollars a month still because <laughs> of this bull crap. So I advocate for you going to go find yourself a a neighborhood computer dork who knows how to do this shit and get yourself an Amazon Fire uh, uh, not Amazon, a Fire Stick of some kind because this is and, and I shouldn't say that, but I don't even care. Like you're ripping people off. We should have to watch a playoff series on cable or regular TV. I no. shouldn't have to have a streaming service to watch it because no. not everyone has seven streaming services like I do. Nope. And not everyone has that. They they pull one. You know, on. They pull one. On. And if you're an but MMA when we pull fan, one back on them, it's a problem. What was that? When we pull one back on them, it's going to be a problem. Exactly. But but that's why people you know with MMA and boxing they have fire yep. sticks because paying eighty five dollars a fight now. And ninety nine dollars a fight is outrageous. I mean, in September, September fourteenth, they're gonna have the UFC Noche, whatever they called it, on September fourteenth in their new sphere in Vegas. And at the same damn time, Canelo is fighting at the T Mobile in Vegas. That was a fuck you to Dana White by MGM, uh, which was bullshit. You should not be. That you shouldn't. They shouldn't have done that. That's fucked up. But that's a fuck you to him. And and he has announced it that it's like I can't stand these people. And yeah, you're gonna have two. $90 fucking pay-per-view cards at the same damn time in Vegas on at the sa- on the same night. And you know where you're going to go to a sports bar? They're going to have both of them on. <laughs> they're, they'll be paying for both of them. Yeah. And then they're going to charge you $20 to walk in the to door. Walk in the door. Because they don't charge for MMA, but they charge for boxing yeah. all the time. I've been to plenty of things for MMA at Twin Peaks and different restaurants. And they they don't charge them. for MMA. Boxing, they charge for every fucking time, and it, it, it. So yes, when we go, when we're we're off topic now, obviously. But when I talk about when I see these salaries for football players, it's bullshit for quarterbacks. These guys don't deserve this money. They didn't earn this money. Mo- half these dudes fucking suck. Half. Half them suck. Tua without Tyreek Hill is useless. Fifty-two million dollars for this guy. <laughs> Fuck out of here, man. This is a it's outrageous. It's outrageous. I've been saying how long I've been they screaming just, it. They, they just crippled their franchise. And I've been because I've been playing football and I've seen a lot of quarterbacks <laughs> that are not good or that you get talked about better than you are. And I've and I watch film. I break it down. I I, I see what you're doing in this case and who you should have hit and, and who was open and, and the throws that you should have made that you didn't make or that went in the dirt or the safety was right there. And you did not read him being right there. And you throw Tyreek Hill right into the middle of the safety when he's right there. And Tyreek Hill should get clobbered. But some since the rules are changed a little bit, oh. DBs go more for the ball than going for a knockout hit to knock him out the game. Yeah. Like, you get away with stuff like that. You're not a good quarterback. You're, you're getting away with the system and, and, and the people around you and, and all the speed that they have over there in, in Dolphin land. But when – they got to the end of the year last year, and they needed big games from him to step up against Buffalo, to step up against Baltimore, to step up against the Chiefs. And what did they get from him? The Dolphins, was, they were the first seed. Everything could have came we through. The, we were the number one seed with four weeks to go in the season. Everything could have came through. Everything could have came through Miami. And fucking Tua from losing the damn Tennessee Titans. And they can blame the defense. They, no, motherfucker, you're the quarterback. Score. That Score. You're playing a bad team on your home field. You're 14. Score. No, you don't, you didn't score. You let them back in the game. You let because you didn't score. They are able to take, take, win the game, and I knew they'd lose that game the way they were playing it defensively. I had a feeling it was gonna happen because I because you see every single time. Not, not with three minutes left in the game, Rudy. Not no. with three minutes left in the game. Not with the oh, no. when, when, back when, 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 when they scored that fast and then Tua didn't move the ball three feet with the backup yeah. quarterback. Huh? With the backup quarterback, he was their starter now. Will Levis was the starter. Well, he wasn't. I, 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 yes, I did believe that once that we didn't, once the Dolphins did not score, that we were going to lose that game. I did because I don't believe in that team. I don't believe in them. Yeah, there's so nothing. To, there's nothing to believe in with those guys. They should have been the first. They should have been the first seed. Everything should have came through my head. Seed. We should have been fucking sitting at home and not playing against and the And blown out by thirty-seven by 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 Lamar Jackson against Baltimore. So oh, that, game, that game was 10-10, remember? Yeah, and, and that's the problem. Like, okay, people are going to make this use of Baltimore had a top defense in the league. The Chiefs had a top defense in the league. Well, that's what I'm paying you for, to be able to be 
decent against those top teams, top defenses in the league. If you can't beat those guys or the guys that's top five or top ten, then what am I paying? Oh, you can, you can score 70 points against Denver defense, who was god-awful at that mm-hmm. point. Like, that's not doing nothing for me. I I can go out there and throw the ball against Denver that week with my receivers six yards open from it the It was so bad that the Denver was so bad that day that, I mean, it was, we should have scored 90. You could have. <laughs> we should have scored 90 points. And he could have. So, but this quarterback money is crazy to me. And, I, and I'm disgusted. And I completely agree with James Jones. He's not hating. He's telling the fucking truth. If you don't like it, eat a dick. Because the fact is they're, they're killing their franchises with these bullshit contracts. They should be paid more in line with what they're fucking they deserve, not what the market says. Just because this guy gets paid this doesn't mean you get it too. I got to get their agent. And, and I can't be mad at the agent. Well, he got that paid. He got paid that much. Well, my guy got to get a, a cent more than that or right around that ballpark. Why, but why should anyone make one cent more than Patrick Mahomes? No, I don't know. And if, because, because when Patrick Mahomes' number's up, and I wish it would be up right now, they should pay him $75 million, call it a day, and, and say, if any other idiot wants to spend that kind of money on their quarterback, you go ahead and do it. And what did Patrick, my, and my what QB Patrick, win Super Bowls, yours doesn't. And what did Patrick Mahomes just prove? That he could carry so He carried dogs to the finish line. <laughs> and, he carried dogs to the finish line. And you see what he just got? He just got himself fucking the fastest dude in the fucking combine history. And they got some other wide receiver, didn't they? Yeah. Who, um, they, who else did they get? No, they, they brought back. So, Kelsey, no, they, who was the other receiver they yeah, called? Hollywood, did Hollywood Brown go to the Chiefs? Hollywood Brown. That's who they got. Hollywood Brown. They got Hollywood Brown, and they got the fastest dude in the freaking dra- in, in the history of the draft. And last year, he was throwing a guy who couldn't catch the ball, and another guy that they, they, they left at home in the Super Bowl because he was so bad. <laughs> and won the ball with a running back and a tight end. Mm-hmm. Did enough on offense. I'm not going to say they were the most amazing offense, but they he controlled found a way the game. To win every he fucking, made he a, found a way to win every he guy. Found a way. He made the plays and the throws when he needed to make it. Their defense was, he, he found their a defense way. was amazing. Now I'm not going to. I'm not going to. But you know what? Because it was great. But you know what? You playing the Niners who was a great defense. Mm-hmm. So if you have a great defense, right? Yeah. Like this is what we're talking about. You have a great defense. You put you beat a great defense. I don't expect them to score 48 points against the Niners because. It's complimentary football. Like, the teams that win play complimentary football. You have a good defense. Look at the play that won the fucking game. It's coaching. Yeah. All that matters. Coach them. Andy, Andy Reid calls a play. X is an old sin with defense they're in. They're, they're, not travel, they're not traveling with the DBs. It's not, you know, they're not making the right switches and things of that nature. You see it as a mismatch in that. Like, he took advantage of the, 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 uh, the Philadelphia Super Bowl when they couldn't for the God's sake of them, handle a switch by a receiver coming in motion from the opposite side. And he took advantage of that the whole game. And you're like, what the hell is the Eagles doing? You can't handle that simple switch. And I was Andy Reid. But, but this is a collective group effort of winning in sports. You know, mm-hmm. if the center and the O-line is god-awful, then it don't matter what quarterback we have back there because he can't get the ball off. Brother. So yeah, that that's that's all I got on this quarterback deal. Um, I want to jump into the next topic, next conversational piece. You mentioned, um, I mentioned Emmanuel Acho. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel Acho's on the same damn show. I tell you, you know, I think this show speak is rather. You have a beeping in the background. Everything all right? Your yeah. alarm going off? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> um, I, I you know it's funny when they talk about in general, like all these shows are the same, right? They're all the same. Yeah, they are all. I did a video a couple of weeks back on Skip Bayless, and you know because the reality is everyone owes him a, a debt of gratitude for what he created because yeah. he created the shit. He, he created it with you know with with first take cold pizza, cold all that pizza stuff. first take. He, as much he as created, I don't like him, I you know don't have to like him. him. He created this shit. He given he's given so many people so many opportunities. Uh, Stephen A. Smith's entire career is owed to to Skip Bayless at this point because. At the time he was on the he radio was, on ESPN, he, he was, was nobody. He, he was going nowhere because he had already been fired. Um, and he was stuck to radio. And I'm sorry, but radio does not make you the money that television makes you. Um, he's created, an, I mean, look at Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee doesn't exist without Skip Bayless. Shannon Sharp doesn't exist. Uh, hell, Keyshawn Johnson, Michael Irvin, he's, he hired all these guys. Richard Sherman. He, I mean, all these dudes he brought in 
and he's helped so many of these dudes. And I mean, people say he's a piece of shit. Whatever. Yeah, I think some of this rhetoric is, at a certain point got tired. But we're we're doing this shit because he did that shit, and he made it acceptable for people to literally talk shit because that's what it is. It's talking shit about professional sports because. In the past, it was simply, you write a story, you speak on facts, you do not provide opinions unless you played and you're on a Sunday show with uh, CBS, NBC, or whatever. Otherwise, you don't have a whole bunch of opinion shows on this. Mike Shanahan. I mean, mean, not Mike Shanahan. Strahan. Michael Strahan. So I'm thankful for what he, the avenue he provided. So speak is nothing different than that. It like every all these shows are the same. Yes, it's just different he made point, of view, who point of view that you like. Who who do you care to listen to? But it's all basically about the same topics, and everybody's going in and on that. Your so opinion. Emmanuel Acho gives a response on Lamar on John Harbaugh's vision of Lamar Jackson becoming the goat. Now I think Jim, John Harbaugh is must be smoking a good pipe or something because. Lamar Jackson, as good as he might He's, be, he he, he, had, he he ain't Patrick Mahomes. He needed he some early Tom success. Huh? And he didn't have it. Like he, he needed, hasn't like, had, in, he the hasn't had, in the playoffs. Yeah, in the playoffs. He hasn't had. Yeah. Well, that's the success that everyone now judges as important. I don't. But everyone well, judges. When, as I want to. I want to be mad at him if he didn't fall off so much from the what he does in the regular season until the playoffs. It looked like a totally different player. It looked like he tried to become the quarterback that. The, the, that people tell him to be rather than being the amazing spectacle and, and player that he is when he goes out there and just play free will, break the pocket, break containment, keep the, the, the play alive, throw the ball down the field, make the linemen and linebackers look foolish because he could run the ball and he has he's that gotten, other option. He's gotten slower. I mean, so he's still, he he's still, he has, he, he definitely lost his step. He's got, he's lost his step with the speed and that's, you know, but but he can lose a step and and be four four. Well, well, the point of this was Emmanuel Acho. <laughs> he says, unfortunately, Lamar is playing in the same era as Caleb Williams. What? Who will be in the goat conversation by the end of his rookie contract? He he couldn't even lead USC. To a, a decent year last year, they fell off so bad. But he's gonna do it in the NFL right now after one year. That's what we're proclaiming after one year. Like let people grow up a little bit. Let's let's see what that quarterback could develop into. Give him some time. Why do we have to rush somebody to greatness? It takes give me like after four or five years, and you're like, okay, damn, he can be in the goat conversation. But after a year. But he didn't even get to that year yet. He didn't even get to that year yet. He hasn't even signed yet. Yes. And so for to make an outlandish statement like that, that's just damn comedy. Like, there's no way we should be jumping off the boat so fast and so early to make a statement like that. I get it. It's a shock factor. It's it's cool to say. It's cool to go in public. And, oh, because you know what? You could say it in a couple years or five years from now. I said it first. Rather than I was right. You know, but, but what if you're wrong? Then you don't say it. You'd be like, okay, I was wrong. But will, will, will you? No, so I'm just going to make. They 30... never say they were wrong, though. That's no, they never say they were wrong. You know. They wait for the next person to come up, come aboard, and then you jump on that next gravy train and say, well, this guy's going to be in the GOAT conversation and, uh, by the end of his first five games of a quarterback. <laughs> so. I, I don't know why it's the rush to say it. I mean, the jury's still out on Caleb. Like, jury, he hasn't played it down. Yes, the jury's out. There's no jury. It's, it's out, though. I mean, I'm just saying, we're, we're about to be the jury that's out on it. What's jury? He's, he hasn't he, played he, We don't even know if he's going to get an NFL. He has a sign. He wasn't even good in college his senior year. No, if you're keeping it real. If, if you, you want to be real, you're you're keeping you, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have even been the first pick of the draft. It, the hype from the other years before it kept He was hyped for one season at USC as a, as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. The dude is, a, is, is, he hasn't signed. He's sketchy as freaking hell, the way he l- behaves. Yes, we'll leave it at that. Like, like <laughs> between the dresses and the fingernail paint, all this 
freaking nonsense going on. And now I'm, he's not, it's a slotted contract. Yeah, I don't even know he's trying to get. Like, I hear people that's in the background saying, well, it's bigger than what you think. He's trying to get the, the money so he don't get taxed off of it and this and that and that. It's a slotted fucking deal. You know, it's where the area. And, 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 you're, and, and you're sitting here comparing a guy who hasn't played one singular down to a guy who's won two NFL MVPs in six years. He's ahead of him. No matter how you slot it, he's ahead of him right now by far. <laughs> like, like, what are we talking about right now? Like, the, we haven't even seen a preseason game. Again, he what? hasn't signed. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Bro, I, I this is these are the types of hot takes. Cause it ain't hot, it's just stupid. That I I I, I don't understand how this could come out of this man's mouth. Caleb Williams was lucky to be the first pick. I mean, we thought J.J. McCarthy would pick number one the way that was going with him. The way they but, switched that narrative. The way they were pushing that with, man up. And now he can't even one. He can't even be the he starter. Can't start for, at, he can't even start at Minnesota. He might be the third uh, string the way they was talking about it. Like, he has but, so far to go. But, but we Caleb that. Williams. But Caleb, it, no. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah, Caleb, Williams is known, Caleb Williams is known for what? What yeah. is he known for? That he's just a quarterback. Who, no, he's. He's Patrick Mahomes. He okay. can scramble. He can break the pocket. He can make throws off the run. Things in that. He can't, he can't run. He, he can't, can't run. run a little bit, but he he's can't definitely run. He's a gunslinger. He's playing in Chicago. Yeah, he just, he, that's the worst place for him to that's get. That's the going. worst place in the world for someone who throws the ball why, to go play. That's why I probably have never been a good quarterback in Chicago. There hasn't been. <laughs> They were a championship, but the quarterback wasn't great. There hasn't been a good quarterback in Chicago in my lifetime. Yes. Jim McMahon was not really that good. No. I, I mean, they haven't had a good QB in my life in Chicago. You have to be that you have to be able to run for sure. You need a running game. That's why the best teams they had have been able to run the ball. Because all that other shit, it doesn't matter. You need a running game in Chicago. This dude is supposed to all of a sudden, and, he, and where did he play? California? Nice. Beautiful. It ain't Chicago. It's going to be tough sledding for him. I, but he Bro. has some nice weapons on his team. So, um, I know they just re-signed DJ Moore to like a, a lengthy contract. They got DJ Moore. They got my guy from, um, from the Chargers, Keenan. The Yankees are going to blow this game. They got Keenan over there. Unbelievable. They got more. They they got a they got a they got a nice little roster over there on the offensive side, and their defense played well at the end of last year. So, I mean, I, I I'm not gonna say that I'm not rooting for them, or I am rooting for them. I really don't care, but I do want to wait and see what can he be. I don't see how in the world that Acho can even think this in his how this even pops in his brain. This is insane. It's absolutely insane to me. You have a guy who hasn't signed, who clearly shows that he's selfish as fuck, cares about himself only, because how are they going to be successful if this guy's not in camp? Keep it real. Rob Purdy's better than him right now. Fuck yeah, he's better than him. Of course he's better than him. <laughs> Rob Purdy's better than him. How can that, but how can that comparison even be made? He hasn't played one single down in the NFL, even in a preseason game. And he wasn't very good last year at USC. They were seven and six. He was a part of that. I know their defense was bad, but the defense was atrocious. But he also, in the second half of the year, he wasn't very good. No, I, I find that to be absolutely asinine. It's crazy. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, but you know what? I, I'll have to come up with a more ridiculous and asinine comment. Oh my lord, this is not. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, the Yankees are not going to extra innings. I'm sorry. The Yankees had a 5-4 lead going to the ninth. They gave up a run on no no hits. Error? Okay. Sorry, a walk, was it a walk or was it an error? An error? <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, a, 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 a ground ball force out. Another ground ball. And then a wild pitch scores the run. They have the bases loaded. 
ground ball to first base. The ball literally bounces off the first baseman's glove. It goes to the second baseman, and the pitcher covers first base, and they get out of the inning. Wow. This, this is it's going to extra innings. The Yankees will find a way to lose. That's what we do. Um, but, man, I, yeah. I, yeah, he, yeah. I got nothing left on this one. Yeah, we can skip that. Are there any topics left that you want to talk about? Because I'm going to jump into one that I just did a rant on, but we can talk about it as well. Who that? Um, that I posted. <clears throat> um, um, well, there's two. It's two, actually. Because I posted I posted two of them. So you, let, let's get your take on this. First off, we have Steve Kerr, who decided that it was a, a good thing to do to bench Jason Tatum in uh, <laughs> the first game of the Olympics against Serbia. In a game they won by 26, a game they led by 13 in the fourth. Um, in, and, and he played behind Drew. Sorry, he didn't play. So he's behind his own teammates, Drew Holiday and Derek White. Who are role players on their team. Who are role players. And he's behind Devin Booker, Bam Adebayo, Anthony Davis. Um, KD. Well, KD, KD and KD didn't start. That's what's crazy. KD didn't start. And a- um, a- a- and Anthony Edwards. Look, I have gone on record. I don't think Jason Tatum is a top ten NBA player. I think he's hovering ten, maybe ten to fifteen. I've said it. Um, I believe that. And he's, I agree. He's, he's not that guy, but that guy has been first team All NBA three straight years. And there were people that were comparing him to LeBron. Uh, even as of this year. And then he doesn't win MVP of the Eastern Conference Finals. He doesn't win MVP of the NBA Finals. Nonetheless, Jason Tatum is still a really fucking good player. And if you're going to go to the, if you're going to go to the Olympics, you're not in any way, shape or form thinking that you're not going to see the floor even for five minutes. I'm not saying that you dump him in the game with five minutes to go when he hasn't played, because that's actually just as embarrassing. But I cannot understand how Steve Kerr can sit here with a straight face and say that he can't find a way to play everybody on this team at least five minutes, the same way that the freaking lady for the what you call it the um, the women's team didn't play Caitlin Clark. Did play all? She played all twelve. There were some that didn't play as much. But they all played. I don't see how you can't find. I mean, this is this is their career and this is his brand. His, his brand. It's taking his a brand's hit. taking a hit right now. His brand took a hit because of Jalen Brown. But his brand is getting beaten down now. I, um, and after just getting paid five years, three hundred plus million dollars, I think. Uh, what do you think? So, I watched the game, man, and the game was closer than people are making it, making it out to be. So, I think in the heat of the moment, I think Steve Kerr was thinking the best way to win the game, which was with his dogs, uh, LeBron. KD came in and was spectacular. Uh, Drew Holiday was hounding people on defense. Booker was hounding people on defense. White came in, and he was a person that fit into the role of what they need for the team. I think he getting the short end of the stick because what does he do? He's a person who pounds the ball. He doesn't play off the ball. He doesn't sit in the corner and wait for the view to kick it to him and shoot it. He's not known to be – the defender like that for to guard guards. So he's a he's a small forward. Who are they small forwards? LeBron James. Arguably the best player on the team. No, fuck that. LeBron James is the best player on that team. KD came back from injury. Got to get him back incorporated. The second best player on that team. You have AE on the wing. All these people that need the ball in their hands. Well, KD could fit in on any roster. But LeBron has the ball in his hands the whole day. KD plays that same position. A.E. has the ball, and he pounds it a lot. Uh, what does he fit in on the roster? You, you're still making a team that fits. People that fit as one cohesive unit. You think he's better than Jason? Do you think Anthony Edwards is better than Jason Tatum? I think for this roster of guarding other guards who are, small, who are guarding smaller guards and being the best. That wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. Who, for the fit for this roster of guarding, small, the question. Of guarding smaller guards. You keep changing the question. You keep changing the question. Ask the question one the more question. time. Is, is who, Anthony Edwards better than is, Jason Tatum? Is Anthony Edwards better than Jason Tatum? I think Anthony Edwards is better than Jason Tatum. Yes, yes, I do. Believe Period. It. No matter what. Yes. Not for the purposes of guarding small guards. No, I think he's better. I, say three times. I, think, I think he's better than Tatum. I think he's around the top 10 player. I don't think Tatum is a top 10 player. Just like you don't. 
And I think AE is around top 10. So that would make him a better player, right? You don't, you, where do you have AE? I have, I have, again, I'm asking you the question. Oh, yeah. I think he's a better player. Yes. Okay. So you think he's a better player? He's better off the dribble. I think he's better off the dribble. He's a better defender. He's not a better shooter. Um, He's not a better shooter. Well, he's not a better shooter. Well, we see Tatum go through his slumps. One day he's five for 18. You're right. And, and, He's I, very I inconsistent. The, I, I watched the Eastern, the Western Conference Finals, and I watched Anthony Edwards completely shit the bed for four games. That's also true. And, and I'm a humongous Anthony Edwards That's fan. That's also true. Is Derek White better than Jason Tatum? No. Is Drew Holiday better than Jason Tatum? No. Is Bam Adebayo better than Jason Tatum? No. Devin Booker? Uh, wash. About so at the, at the very least, he's the, the the eighth best. At the worst, he's the ninth best player in this team. He could be the eighth. And, and the best, he's a top four, top five. And the, and the best, and, and in many people's opinion, he's a top five player in the NBA. And and, and per the national media, for, for which all NBA is now positionless, he is top five. It's for positionless three straight, for to a point. Years, it's, just, it's completely posi- – okay, tell me who's on – tell me who's on Serbia's – I'm roster. just saying they did have less – little more smaller guards, and these guys were hustling. Okay. Or is he – Okay, okay, who plays oh, – okay, oh, let's, oh, let's, 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 let's look at who plays for Serbia. I, I'm serious. Outside of Nikola Jokic – Bajanovic and, and Jokic and Joker. Okay, be, beyond Joker – and Jokic, Jok- Jovic, and Bajanovic. Who's Jovic? Remind the people who Jovic is. For the uh, Miami Heat, uh, second. How tall is, how tall is Jovic? About 6'10". He's 6'10". Is, is Tatum better than Jovic? No, but he don't play for Serbia. He plays, <laughs> he Did you plays just say for the United not, States. You, you, you just say Tatum's not better than Nikola Jovic? No, I said he, he is better, but he doesn't play for okay. Serbia. All right, but you, you, you talked about matchups and people being, on, him being unable to guard these people. The, the guard, but his Bogdan, position, Bogdan, Bogdan, Bogdan Bogdanovich is 6'5". Yes. Philip, Philip Petrusev, I have no idea who that well, is. Well, Rudy, he's not a fucking fit. At the end of the day, he's not the fit he's on the not, roster. He's not a fit. He's a top five player in the league who got benched. Who, who dribbles the ball, pounds the ball, benched. who's another person who's holding the, the ball. Is, well, what's your job as a coach? Is your job as a coach to actually put a system for the team? Yes. So this and, guy knows what his job is? If his job is to stay in the fucking corner, go stay in the fucking corner. What is that what he's good at? Catching spot up shots and, and shooting short corner shots and not being active with having the ball Jason in his hand. Tatum, Jason Tatum literally does that for the Celtics. He spots up the shoot. No, he's off the dribble, 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 tween, 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 side step, step back. You know that little shot he does all day. Most of his shots are off the fucking kick out. No, most, most of his shots, shots off most the of his ju- Most of his jump shots are off kick out. He gets a couple. Most of his jump shots are off kickouts. Oh, not really. But I agree to disagree. Devin Booker has the ball in his hands for fucking 40 minutes. <laughs> You're not going to tell me that Devin Booker is better than fucking Jason Tatum. Obviously, what happens in practice is we're seeing that Devin Booker adapt, really? adapted better to this roster than he has. So Devin Booker has been a Man, great You a are great, out of your he, fucking mind. Devin Booker has been a great it, defender. It, it, Devin Booker is shooting. Is, is really? Was he, when, was, he a great, was he a great defender when they didn't? Play, when he was sitting the bench in other games earlier this in, during their little practice run, was he a better player then? Was he a better defender then? Because there was a few games where Devin Booker could barely get on the floor, and and, and there was I, a game. There was a couple of games uh, that they won by one and then, won by four. Then how have Tatum look in those games? I have no fucking idea. I don't care. What you mean? I don't, you don't care. Give that, a shit. It matters. It, what does it matter if you're? Bro, what you mean it don't matter? Bam out of bio is playing ahead of Jason Tatum. Yeah, and I'm a Heat fan. But Bam out of bio should Bam give him a little bit more girth, girth, a little bit more size. Yeah, okay. And and you say it's more physical than overseas. Joel Embiid is seven foot one. Why isn't he giving the girth and the size against fucking Joker? Joel Embiid, I almost called him a a word that I don't want to call him, but. Joel Embiid is a freaking problem. And, he's, and that's who I have a problem with on this roster. It's Joel Embiid. He played 11 minutes. That should be a problem because he's supposed to be the best big man in the league. Who's the, big, who's the biggest guy in the – who's the biggest guy playing for the fucking the, – the, the, US, the U.S. team if Embiid's on the floor? Anthony Davis. KD. Tall, sorry, the tallest guy. KD. It's KD. Yes. It's KD. The biggest guy – is is Anthony Davis and Bam Earth and Bam? Yep. All right. 
Yeah. But the tallest guy is is Camp Kevin Durant, even though he claims he's not seven no, foot. No, he's tall. seven foot. He, and he claims he's six nine, yet he's taller than both of those dudes who are measured at six eleven and six nine, six ten. He's taller than both of them. Um I, I just think that you guys you guys have created this new this new form of positionless basketball, which I fucking despise. Um and, and that and that now you use it against this guy. And you talk about matchups. I'm just saying, man. Matchups. You want to know why LeBron James is successful in, in international ball? Because he's LeBron James. No. No. Why? Because, because LeBron he get, James he get to play like LeBron James. LeBron James is allowed to play like a fucking linebacker. Yes. He's allowed to play like a linebacker. He's a bulldozer. He's running people the fuck over. So when people... Like, like let's be real. That's what's happening. So when people are telling me that in LeBron... The NBA, did, in the NBA, he doesn't do this. He, he doesn't do this. Not anymore. as long. I think he also do he has a and lot. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to play with 10 all-stars. That's what I'm going to say. That's the difference. And, and, I, and I do think that people, are, I know you love him and all that shit. He's a beneficiary of deferment. They are deferring to him. The same way that people deferred to Kobe Bryant in 08, they have deferred to him. No, he's the best person on the roster. He's shown it. He's the best. Was he the, was, was he the, was he the best person on the roster in 08? Yes. Who was leading scorer? No, no. He, I think, to be honest, 08, I think it was D-Wade. Oh, no, no, D-Wade was leading scorer. I so think was, the, I think D-Wade was the best D-Wade player. D-Wade on was, the- was the best player. Who, who, hit the, who, hit the killer, who hit the shots that killed people? Kobe. Kobe made the big shot. Kobe. They deferred to Kobe. That's what I'm talking about. Kobe made the big they deferred, shot. They deferred to Kobe despite the fact that he wasn't the best player on that team. But also, but Kobe also could get his shot at the moment better than anybody else to get to his spot. Who gets, so who, gets, situation. Who, who gets who gets to the shot their best on this team? Uh, on this team, KD. Yeah. Okay. But in this between KD and LeBron, because LeBron getting to his best shot is getting layups. Nobody can stop him from getting there. Yeah, he's running people over. I know. No, he's running people. He's literally bulldozing people. And and in the NBA, he'd be called for an offensive foul. Um. Yeah. So when people are saying that LeBron can't play in the eighties and nineties with certain people, I'm not well, I never, I never, I never, no, I think where he would, I, I think his, the, the, the flip and his attitude and approach to everything of crying about every fucking call is what's turned people off. Yeah. He didn't used to complain. Well, when people his, say his, he, first, his first eight, nine years, he didn't like, before he got to the heat, he didn't complain about calls the way he complained once he got to the heat. I remember when he got tapped by Nazir Muhammad and flew 30 yards. <laughs> From mid court to the middle of the key, and, and you know, and and flopped. I mean, the floppery that he does nowadays is just nauseating because you're too yeah. damn big. And realistically, you're fouling the shit out of people with your elbows, hitting them in the face, and you don't get called for it. You 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 create the contact, and then you complain about the contact coming back to you. He so, he got that flopping for overseas. He married very well, very well may have, but now overseas basketball is crazily more physical than 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 the NBA. But and we've but. It. The crazy, um, the crazy part. The one, is, so the one rule of the of overseas basketball that I wish they'd incorporate in the NBA is goaltending. I wish they would. If the ball's in the rim, flush this shit back down. I think the goaltending, offensive goaltending call, is the stupidest call there is. The defensive goaltending call is the stupidest call there is when the ball's on the rim. Knock the bitch off. Uh-huh. Flush it down and knock it off. Uh-huh. This, this shit where you, this shit where you get called for goaltending when the ball's a centimeter off the rim or. Hovering the rim and it's literally clearly coming off the rim. You could call for goaltending for dunking it back in is ridiculous to me, and I like that about about the, the international game. Um, I actually okay, do like Lord. it. I, I have my. I feel you like fuck, You like getting a point in fucking twenty yards of a whatever the fuck you call it. So you, you, have, route. you know, you, you have no problem with the one point in the CFL. No. So I, I I think that that's a good good call for. I think that's a rule that they can move over. Um. I think LeBron is successful in this because he's able to be a fucking bulldozer. So there's a little, there's literally one play this guy but named. The best player, but the best player on Team USA is Kevin Durant. It's, it's, it's a toss up. If Kevin Durant's on that team, they're not going to win. No, if they need him. It they need. Been, they sh- you saw it. they. If fucking Kevin Durant need if, him, if I was man. I was going to say thank you for Kevin Durant being on this team because I thought, I I thought the problem on this team, I thought the the, the what was going to put this team over the top. Was having Joel and B. I thought there's what, something beeping in your background, bro. What I, is that? I, I, I could go cut it off. It's too far, man. I think it's the microwave. Is that the fire alarm? The microwave, I believe. I thought it was my microwave. My, no, I see you keep turning on? around. It's my microwave. I'm looking at. I see you keep turning around, man. But I want to say thank you for adding KD to this team and and being on this roster. He's definitely the difference maker. The difference maker who has been the biggest disappointment on this team is Joel and B. 
we we take him from 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 a different country. We give him a nil deal to join this roster, and he's been a he's the best big man in the league supposedly. And when we added him to this team, it was supposed to be at, like adding the sixth Infinity Stone, and Who's he's not giving us any of that. He's Who's, whose fault is that? It's Joel. Joel is walking around the court lethargic. He's not bringing any energy to the roster. And he's, his role has changed. Okay, your role has changed. Go get every rebound. Go get the block shots. Be the defender. Be the paint presence that we need for this roster. That was a problem when they went and played a couple years ago or last year when we had Jaron Jackson as our best big man and, and Bam in them. But when we added in B, it was supposed to be a tank walk to this to this, so, to you, this. so you think it's only on Joel Embiid? Yes, it's definitely on Joel Embiid. Look at his body language. It's nothing about I've, his, I've not watched. The, I've not watched the game. Nothing about his body language is good. I've watched pieces literally, of literally. Uh, uh, Rudy, Dwayne Wade was on the. He was calling the game. Oh, please don't ever let him call a game again. Dwayne Wade was calling the game. He said that Steph Curry is the best screener on this roster. Now, for the six three guy, a hundred and ninety pound player, to be the best screener on his roster when we have a person who's seven foot one, three hundred and forty pounds on his worst day. What? Three hundred and forty pounds? Joe Joel Embiid is definitely three thirty. Three forty? He's definitely three thirty. Forty? He's he's definitely a large man, Rudy. I don't you think care. he's bigger than you think. You think he's bigger than Shaq? I think Shaq was three seventy around in his when he was really playing. When he when he gained all that weight, well, they said he was they said he was two ninety. So Joel is probably easily three fifteen. So he's been I, the biggest disappointment on this roster, and for like for us for him to be the upgrade on Bobby Portis and Jaron Jackson, and for him to give us well, one, well, the fact that Bobby Portis was on an Olympic team is a problem in itself. Yeah, but he's supposed to be our best big. He's supposed to be the person that that changes the whole inside when we play against other teams that in international play. Well, so let me, I'm, gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you the question again. Whose fault is that? Joel Embiid. I'm not gonna blame why, why I'm not it, blaming why LeBron. Is it, why is it why is it Joe why is it Steve why is it Joel Embiid's fault that Steve Kerr doesn't call a post up play the mm -hmm. first four or five plays of the game? Joel is standing out there by his own sometimes. Oh, whose fault is that? Joel, man, because it, you can So every team that he plays for, he does this. He does this with Doc Rivers, he did this with Brent Brown, yeah, but he's now still, he's doing he's this with Steve goes, Kerr. He still goes into the I know he likes to be on the perimeter, he, but he still goes into the post. Yeah. A lot. Why, if he's not going into the post with this group, that's by being told that I believe. Man, you're not cool. going to sit here and tell me that he's going to go into the post, demand the ball, and the play is not called well, to go into the post. He also, and we know how LeBron plays. LeBron needs the open middle to be successful to do this driving kick. But he also so can run pick and pop with this guy and get him going from the mid range. Or, or lob. I don't. I don't want Joel Embiid ever outside of the box. I, no, he, no, he has a nice little mid range. I, I don't want to see. I, his, I, 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 don't, I don't need. To, I don't need to see his mid range with these screw. I need to see him in the block being dominant dominate around the rim. Because the I only problem, I, I got enough mid range guys on my team. I don't the need biggest problem the supposed to be Joker, and you only play in eleven minutes when we play Joker. Then why the hell do we have you on our roster? We gonna give you this money, this nil deal to be on our roster where you could have played. This nil deal. We, we definitely gave him a nil deal to join. We go talk about the my, my. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is karma. My son was born here, and this and that. No, this is you, karma. This is karma. This is deserved. This is the problem with these Olympic teams now where guys can pick and choose the countries that they want to play for that they're not from. I don't care if you've never played for the U.S. I don't even care that you're a citizen of the U.S. now. You weren't born here. You didn't move here until you were like 17 years old. You were literally going to play for France up until like fucking six months ago. And then all of a sudden you decided you're going to play. Literally, they gave him French citizenship to play for France. Now, how ridiculous would it be to have those three guys playing together? That would be horrible because you got three seven-footers like who... Two of them who can't run, and one who's really a guard at seven four. Well, you play point so like, guard. He plays point guard. Oof. You know, so at the end of the day, like, like, what are we talking about here? We have we have gotten to this point where we 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 have guys picking and choosing. Clay Thompson decides he's going to play for the Bahamas because his dad was born in the Bahamas. Clay Thompson, I wonder if he's even been to the Bahamas Damn, so other than playing for the Bahamas. I can't team. play for the Jamaican what? team, Rudy. That's what you're trying to tell me. They don't even, do they even have a basketball team? Oh, no. um, um, but I'm just, it's like these guys are, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's even the funnier shit. The South Sudan team. Yes. Where the fuck is Carly Jones from? 
Does that name even remotely sound Sudanese? <laughs> Jones? <laughs> like, let's be real. Carly Jones is the, well, was the G League player of the year last year, and he gave the U.S. team the fucking business. So, but he's his name is Carleek Jones. So I mean, and he manages to be on the <laughs> South Sudan team. <laughs> I mean, there's other guys. I mean, you have the other guys like Wenyan Gabriel, and and uh, there's other guys. Uh, Shay, let me look at their names. Was it Thon Maker was trying to play, but he couldn't get on. He couldn't get there in time. About, but again, another guy. Where's Bam from? To, where's Bam? Bam is from North Carolina, bro. Oh. <laughs> like you sure? Oh, his background is definitely. He grew up in North Carolina. Oh, his background. He was born. I think. I think he was born in New York, but he's grew up in in, in Carol in North okay. Carolina because he's told us all the time about. Out of Ohio. He's born in New York. Okay. But his but his he, background. He grew up in Carolina. Is he Nigerian? Yeah, he in, though? Nigerian background. His name is Idris, bro. His name his is name is not, his name is Idris. Idris, <laughs> he, he's got to be some level of African because yeah. his name is Adebayo. Femi, Adebayo. Femi Adebayo. Yeah, I, I, I mean, his African. Oh, okay. His father's Nigerian. Yoruba father and an African American mother. So why does he play for Nigeria? Because the motherfucker was born in Newark, New Jersey. Like th- this is like Don Maker. Thon Maker, he was playing. He was in Australia. Um, now Thon Maker was born in South Sudan. Well, at the time it was called Wow Sudan. Now it's South Sudan. But he was in Australia. He couldn't get paperwork clearance to play for South Sudan. But I think he was also trying to play for Australia at one point. I think he did play for Australia at one point. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I could be wrong. People trying to see. get. Hey, Rudy, man, let people. They want to play some basketball. They want to represent the country. He, he played. He he declared. He played for the Australian national team, basketball Canada. He played for fucking Australia. <laughs> How can you change your fucking country you play for? He was the one involved in the Philippines Australian brawl in a in a FIBA game. I remember. That's why I'm like, I know he played for Australia. Don Maker. Thon Maker, but he tried to play for South Sudan. It didn't work out. There's a few guys that try to play for South Sudan. Seems like they're recruiting a lot. Um, because <laughs> their roster, I want to look at their roster real fast. Like, let's look at these guys. They have a few NBA guys in their team. Yeah, they do. Um, you well, know, but nonetheless, fringe, I don't give. A, I, I don't. I don't give a goddamn. You should not be losing. You should not be in a close game with them. I, I'm I mean, you have. Uh, I'm gonna watch the game Gabriel. tomorrow. Huh? I'm gonna watch that game tomorrow. Carly Jones, Nuni Omat. I have no idea that is. Common. Okay, this guy, Common Malu- Maluak, is supposed to be a fucking star. He's like 17. Yeah. He's supposed to be the number one pick in the draft in a couple of years. Bull, Bull Cole. Kuwani. He's got the same damn name, first and last. Kuwani Kuwani. JT Thor. He plays for the Hornets. Mariel Shaycock. Yeah, okay. I've heard, Shaycock. I've, played, I've heard of him. Jackson McCoy, May- Majok Deng. I wonder if that's Luol Deng's brother or something. I don't know. Um, Peter Jock, Sunday Deck. Um, they should not be competing with Team USA. No way. Tell me that. Like I don't want to hear it. Like they should not be competing with Team USA. Why in the world? <laughs> Listen, man. What's going on? Go man? on, be. Get your shit together. I'm tired of seeing it. You're moping around. Are you? Do you want to play for us or not? Because you, you I, came I, here. I, 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 I want to see how, how many of these guys were actually born in Sudan. Wake your big ass up and give us something. You out there just <laughs> doing nothing on the damn court. I, th- I think it's karma. That the he's... most talented. Oh, look at this. We always Nuni talk about Oma. how talented he is. Nuni Nuni Oma is not not from not from Sudan. <laughs> he's from Kenya. <laughs> okay, let's look at the next one. Uh, Kamen Maluach. Um, I do this on purpose, folks, because I like to prove the fucking lunacy of this shit. He was born in South Sudan. He's seven foot two and two and two seventeen. He's two, he's a Duke. He's on a Duke. Oh my god, he's gonna play next to fucking uh, Cooper Flack. Ooh, oh my god, that's crazy. Bual Cole. Um, this guy was born in Sudan. Okay, Kawani. Like, who named? I'm not trying to make fun of no one's name, but dude, your first name and your last name shouldn't be the same. Okay, he was born in Sudan. He was born in Sudan. Wenyan Gabriel. I remember him. Yeah, he played for the Lakers. 
He was born in Sudan. He was yeah, on the Lakers last year. He went, to, he went to Kentucky. Yeah, he went to Kentucky. Um, they're long. JT, at, they're long. At JT like they Thor. JT Thor was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Rudy, guess what? When Jamaica brings out a basketball team, guess who's going to be on that roster? Because I got to make that team. Because it's not too many. Bro, every time I, every time I, and it's like, do you watch? Do you watch the the World Baseball Classic? No, I haven't. The World Baseball Classic is comedy because nobody's from where they... <laughs> the Dominicans are. Yeah, for the most part, the Puerto Ricans usually are, but some of them are actually born in the U.S. and their parents are, Domin- are, are Puerto Rican. Which in itself is a whole convoluted bag of shit because even my wife tonight's asking me, well, how does Australia and Canada have a national team when they're truly still under Great Britain, the UK? <laughs> Which makes sense, but Australia's a continent as well. Uh, um, but Puerto Rico is not even really a country. It's a, it's like a, we, it's, we kind of, they're, like they're, they're not even a country. It's U.S. territory. It's a U.S. territory. So how does Puerto Rico have its own teams? Why aren't they playing for the U.S.? <laughs> I've always wondered this. Like, why aren't they playing for the U.S.? Still, is it only, is it only when there's a hurricane that destroys the island that they're American? Yes. And, then, and then otherwise we're Puerto Rican. Yeah. I mean, I know Puerto Ricans. They're all, that's how they all, I'm Puerto Rican, bro. You know, and I'm like cool with that, but you're not American then when the hurricanes come and destroy the country, of course. and you're calling for shit. And stuff. They gotta have an identity, Rudy. You can't just American. You're American. What's the problem? The... Now, mind you, I mean, there's a. I'm, I'm sure there's a, a Samoan team and shit. And then you, that... don't worry about it. I'm gonna be on Jamaica's national basketball team for the next Olympics. We're gonna have one. We had a bobsled team, and now we're gonna. Yeah, cool runnings. And now we're going to have a Jamaican national basketball team in the Olympics. We might not make it to the, to, to, to the, to the medal rounds and stuff like that. But, you know, I could sign up for them because my, my parents are both Jamaican. So, wow. <laughs> Were they both born there? Yes, sir. Did they meet there? Yes. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, oh, cool. I, that's why I, I almost was going to be out. I, I was almost on the four by four. Um, Olympic race the team for Jamaica to, in 2012 Olympics and 2016. Four by four. Yeah. You don't run the 400. I was gonna run it that day, just to get a gold medal. Y'all, y'all would have y'all would have lost. You saying I, they were so good? We don't. I would have did enough. All I got. So do if, you ran, if you ran a 55, that'd be enough in the fucking race where they're running 44s. I, I'm not. That, that's disrespectful. I'm How run, is it disrespectful? I'm gonna run at least a fifty-three. What's the fastest 40, 400 you've run? I'm gonna run at least you have a no 50, idea because you've never been tired. At least a fifty-three. People are running forty-four. If, if, you, if you run a fifty-three, your team would get annihilated. But I'm not when I got Bolt. Bolt gonna catch. Well, Bolt doesn't run the four by four. He runs the four by one. Yeah, well, I'm, that's what I'm running. The four by one, not the four by you four. The four by four. You know what I meant? The shorter one. I don't know what you meant because you said it three times. The I four by the said, four. I'll run a fifty three in the, the four, four by one. one. Yeah, you got me off track, but I'm running the four by one. The shorter race. Come on now, cut it out. So you were gonna run ahead of fucking Johan Blake and all those guys? Yeah, give me. A, I could do a hundred. Yeah, somebody got to go. <laughs> I would have made that team. I would have had a gold medal right now. Yeah, with no, pra- with no practice. No, I'm going to practice, man. But Jamaicans don't need to practice. All we- yeah, your damn bike rib wants you to turn it off. I mean, someone there to turn that shit off yet? Yeah, I can go turn it off. <laughs> Give me a second. So, <laughs> <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Ugh. I don't even know what that thing is. It wasn't even the microwave. It's not the microwave. <laughs> it's not the microwave. You know what? I think we uh changed our water filter, and I probably didn't reset it. Oh, <laughs> I, I I just bought one from my refrigerator. Actually, it's funny. So that might be it. I don't know. So I apologize. So who do, do you think the U.S. is win the gold medal? Yeah, I think they get it done, but it's not going to be pretty. I think. Who do you think they? Who do you think I, they'll play in the gold medal game? I think they get back and they play Serbia again. Serbia. I think Serbia is the strongest team. Ah, uh, Canada, Serbia. I think I, Serbia. I, I, if they, I, I, they play I, I, Canada, they'll be Canada. I can't say this publicly, 
Fuck it. Don't do it, Rudy. Do I not do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. I would, love, I would love, it. love to see Dylan Brooks <laughs> guarding LeBron James. Oh, Lord. In the gold medal game. That would be fun. That, it's going to be. I think that would be funny as shit. It will be funny because it's not just LeBron because he has problems with Anthony Edwards. With everybody. He has problems, problems with everybody. He has problems with, uh, uh, what's my <clears> guy, <throat> Booker. So it would problems be, with everybody. It would definitely be. Oh, Steph Curry. Damn, I forgot Steph. He, I'm pretty sure he'll be out there having a problem with KD also. So let me see mm-hmm. how they've been doing. I ain't even. I don't even know how they've been doing. They won. They Team won. Canada. They won. They're undefeated. Okay. I think they're one and zero. It's only one game to play. And then um, that's cool. yeah. So let's jump into the list. This last topic. Okay. Um, I did a rant on this one too. It's or and it's not getting as many views as I would hope. As much as the Cheryl Swoops is a lunatic one is, because she's an absolute lunatic for the bullshit she said today about Caitlin Clark. Um, but Team USA. They couldn't get a fat kid to eat cake. <clears throat> they couldn't get a fat kid to eat cake. They couldn't dry fly, draw flies to shit. <laughs> and Team USA is shit. The women's team, that is. Mm-hmm. They thought it made a whole lot of sense to leave Caitlin Clark off. And they thought they said, and Drea Carter was on television saying, People will still watch them play. Did you watch that game yesterday? No, I. No. And okay. I, you know what? And I seen somebody on Facebook post, "Oh, they're about to start the WNBA game." And then I also and I went on Instagram and ESPN posted, "Oh, the WNBA game women are going for gold." And I say, "Should I cut it on?" I said, "Why would I do that?" I'm not. I'm not. It was at this. three o'clock, I think. I'm not. It was at it three, was three o'clock. o'clock. Eastern. Good. Eastern. Yeah, time. Time. I'm at home. I still didn't watch. It. I had time. I, I worked. I, I I have a job, so I worked, and I didn't turn the TV. I, I was free at that moment. I just I had did not zero care to watch it. Interest. I had zero interest whatsoever. But we told them. We told them that y'all missed I, the golden opportunity. And I don't want to hear about all that rah rah blah blah blah. The bigger picture was growing the game and having people watching and having viewership and growing your game <laughs> that the NBA still is cutting out checks for and making y'all have a league <laughs> at the end of the day. So we told y'all that people are not going to watch it. If Caitlin Clark is not on that roster, you have a, a person who is amazing as she is, and who's who gravitates the world to the world gravitates to her and watch her. And y'all blow that opportunity. Even Reese, I don't care. Get them on the team. They could have been the 11th and 12th player. They could have been, they could have been Halliburton and, and, and Jason Tatum. For all I care. The first of, the- of all, first of all, Caitlin Clark would have been the starting point guard. We know that, but I'm saying they could have been on the roster because they still you know what if we need them? Y'all are not gonna need them against any other team in this in this well, y'all could use them. Don't get me wrong, y'all can use them. But let's say need, y'all can use them. Cause she's the best well, passer in the league. We've seen if she gets <clears> a couple <throat> other great players on her roster, what that would look like combined with her shooting ability. Well, Chelsea Gray had 13 assists. Yeah, yeah that's good. Um, it, and, and I'm sure Caitlin Clark would have done the same or more. Um, more. more We've probably seen more. her do more with We've less. With We've less, seen. Rudy. She's had done know. more with less. I, I, I know. So yesterday, or in the last two days, the attendance of these games were 27,021 for Spain, China, 24,023 for Nigeria, Australia, 20,211 for Germany, Belgium, 20,211 for France, Canada, 15,324 for Puerto Rico, Serbia. And 13,040 for USA versus Japan. I sent you a photo showing how many empty seats there were in the lower level. If you saw an actual video of this thing, I swear to God, the entire upper deck is empty. They can't draw flies to shit. And they told us that people are still going to watch. I didn't watch the game. It was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I have no idea about the ratings of the game. I don't really give a shit what they are. Um, the whole entire Olympic situation with that opening ceremony was, I'm not going to make it a political thing, but Olympics are political. And if people have to wonder what the hell you were doing with naked people on stage for what used to be a family affair event, people would watch the Olympics opening ceremonies with their children. I didn't watch it. And you have, you didn't watch it. I know. I watched parts of it. I was at, actually, 
I was at Twin Peaks in Hollywood after visiting clients because it was at 4.30 in the afternoon. And I watched a piece of it. They're in boats. It's funny how the U.S. had a fucking monster yacht that took, put all their 600 people on there, and then there was a boat with, like, two people. Um, that itself is like, why, why don't you have more than two people in your country? I, I don't know. I know there's qualifying. <laughs> well, two people in I think they just didn't qualify, Rudy. There's qualify. I guess there's qualifying times or whatever, which yeah. allow you to be, like, Olympic times. Yeah. But you have these drag queen looking dancing going on and a picture that to some people and it doesn't matter if it wasn't what it if that's not what it was if they have to ask yeah, no this problem. looks like the last sup the last supper and instead of some greek celebration it looks like a mockery of the last supper i'm not saying it was i know what it looks like i am not an expert in greek mythology most people are not experts in Greek mythology. So most people see that and they picture what they picture. And you have people walk around butt naked. Uh, just in, with paint on. Yeah, paint, well, a, a guy in blue paint naked. This is crazy. This is another story. But So I don't know what the ratings are doing. Uh -huh. I know some people probably aren't watching, but there might be a whole lot of people that are watching now because of they did this. I don't know. That said. They can't draw flies to shit. You told we told you. We told you. We told Caitlin you. Caitlin Clark is to bring the eyes. If that game could have been played at three o'clock in the morning, we would have watched. Anywhere in the world. They could have played the game at three o'clock in the morning in France. They could have played it at three o'clock in the morning in the US. Dude. They could have played the game at three o'clock in the morning anywhere. And if that game was at three o'clock in the morning, Caitlin Clark was on that team, I was watching it. Oh, for sure. Everybody was watching it. For sure. Y'all made this decision to do this. To do this, and you can't even fill up half the building. This, what does that sound like? The WNBA, and that's the problem because <clears throat> their whole marketing and their strategizing and how to create and how to get their buzz. But you have a buzz now, but y'all are gonna y'all gonna blow it. Y'all, I I told y'all already. Our foot is not. We don't have both feet in. We have one foot in, one foot out, and our one foot in is because of Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese has a couple people. She has some fans. Don't get me wrong. But she doesn't move the needle like Caitlin Clark. So y'all keep playing with our one foot that's that's in. Like we won't pull that motherfucker right back out. Keep playing with us. We would. We'll do it. And then guess what y'all are going to go back to? Crack. When y'all had a chance to, 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 to take advantage of the situation. But y'all are not. Just like y'all like, like y'all have games on freaking Saturday. No, on freaking Thursdays at fucking 12 o'clock. What are y'all doing? Who, who, like it's a baseball game. Like, oh, let's have no, a they're trying, they're trying to appease the the kids' camps. That's whatever that means. That's that's what they said. Yeah, that's what they said. Actually, that don't make exactly sense. what they said. The kids gonna get out of camp and they can watch the game after at seven o'clock at night. Like the the kids' camp. What are y'all? So you want? Oh, because they invite them. They give them. They give them free tickets. That's what happens. They give them free tickets because they otherwise people won't go to the games. Yeah. They give them free tickets. They have all these kids from camps come in. And then what happens? If you just gave them the free tickets at seven o'clock at night, their parents would take them. They're free. They're, they're free. Where do you have they're a free. bus that takes them there or to find a way to make it happen? Take it there at seven o'clock at night. Bring them back home. Game. Come on. What? Are, I y'all are just y'all you know, taking golden you, opportunity. Do you, do you know what day the WNBA restarts? The WNBA? No. Uh, it's, yeah. They're probably on a. <laughs> so you, no, you have no idea. No, I know it's a couple. I had. I did look it up. But I forgot. You have no idea. No. That, and that's the point. <laughs> that's the point. You have no idea. You don't know. You have no clue when the WNBA restarts. I don't know the exact. I think it's August 15th. But you don't know. So the momentum that's been building here. People now have to remember. The momentum. That the, the, the August 15th start date. Because right now the momentum is going like this. Yep. Because the Olympics are going on. And the most people are seeing Caitlin Clark is her on vacation with Lexi Ho and, in Mexico and that, having a good old time. And at the end of the day, that was the best thing for her. For her, for her, yeah. For, for her, her yeah. that was the best thing. She needed for that her, break. She, she's been playing ball nonstop. She needed that break. But for the league, for the moment to capitalize, she should have been tired, on the How tired do you get playing 25 minutes? She, if that... 
with the All Star team. She could have played fifteen and laughed and whatever. But, but she, to me, she's a starter. Yes, starter. We, we both believe that. But but if you play twenty five minutes, wh- wh- how tired do you get playing twenty five minutes? And then six times, six times in three weeks. They're not practicing hard. No, they're not killing each themselves. No, this is like it's it's crazy. And for so four- you, you you blew all this momentum. When did the international players start popping off in the in in in, in the NBA? Why? How? Because 1992. They got better because of 1992. 1992. It, it, the Olympic team goes around the world. It transformed the, the whole the whole global everybody. phenomenon until that of basketball. Point, many- and then people got better. They started working on the game. They you know they saw what happened and what it could be. And if we put some effort and some time into our own players and our own sport. What it could be like, but it until, all became... until that point. Until that point, how many international players were in the NBA? No, no a like, few. A, like a handful. Handful. You can count it on your hand. Now look at the the, the most recent draft. They all got drafted. We don't even know the American players. We don't know where they're from. Four. I think there's only four college players in the first ten picks. Like you, you change this. The, you change the, the trajectory of the NBA with 1992 and the Olympic team. The, the trajectory of the WNBA is not changing because of this group of women. Because nobody actually wants to watch them play. If more people want to go watch Spain and China play, I don't want to hear that it's in, it's in France and it's closer to Spain. I don't want to hear it. There were 27,000 plus people at the U.S. men's game. Yes, because they branded People the, want they, to see them play they internationally. Bra- they branded their game to where they They're, became a global phenomenon. Like global. LeBron James. That's who you... It's global. Everybody knows LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows Kevin Durant. Everybody knows Steph Curry. Because how they marketed their game, how they pushed it around the world and showed that we had the best players or we have this phenomenal players that you are going to want to pay your money to see no matter where you're at in the world. You could be 24 hours across the globe. And these are the people that you want to see because they're the best to do it. And we know that because we saw their game It's entertaining. It's fun. And it's a draw. So we look up to these people. They're the, the top of the line of what the sport should be or what we think it should be. And that's why the NBA is the NBA and the WNBA is the NBA. No, no, in, don't get started on the play of like of what the aesthetics look like of watching their sport and watching the NBA, but, but, but with the momentum now everybody's talking about it. But We're making rant about it every day. But twenty seven thousand people went to go watch Spain and China. Is so exactly. You 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 blew an opportunity that was there. And you are going to sit here and double down on it. And you're going to have Don Staley, Don Staley tell us, which I did a rant on yesterday, two days ago. Two days just to say ago. I'm right. Just to say I'm right. Even though you just, to, just But she said, no, she says, uh, if she says, she says, Caitlin Clark, if, if they've been deciding today, they'd be saying it'd be a much different situation. Yeah, she didn't decision. Fully, That's bullshit. She didn't That's fully, bullshit. she didn't fully, fully say like say she would. But she actually but she said can't that, anyway. She can't say it but now. She, but she actually says that. When when it, when they played, they weren't. She wasn't playing well. What? <laughs> when she had the best stats of all the guards when they made the decision. Now she has much better stats than all the guards when they when they're there. Across the board, between points, assists, rebounds, it, steals, it, blocks, she efficiency, wasn't, all that stuff. She wasn't getting acclimated to the WNBA. Like, like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, she you, just you played, double, like she just played. And, and you know, a week and a half ago, right before the All Star game, she says that Angel Reese is the, is the rookie of the year. And now, but now, a week and a half later, even though they haven't had played one game since then, Caitlin Clark is playing head and shoulders above the rest of the league. <laughs> Fuck, what are you talking about? There's one person who's who's better than her in the league, and that's Asia Wilson right now. And that's right now. In two years, in two years, Caitlin Clark's the best player in the, in, in the WNBA. I, I, I'm, I'm in, in the w, in two years, she's the best. She's the best player in the WNBA. Ah, Brianna's still better than her. No, she's not. Yeah, no, no she's not. Brianna, no, she's not. Still, we still better than her right now. No, she's not. No, she's not. I don't agree with that. I'm right thinking, now, Caitlin Clark's going to finish in the top three in MVP. She's a she's a top five. She's a top guard. I, I'll give you that. I think she's, she's I think best she's player than Brianna Stewart. I think she's better than Brianna Stewart. I think she's better than Sabrina Ionescu. I think she's the only player that you can 
without question say she's is better than her is Asia Wilson. Because I, re, here's the reality. Asia Wilson is playing with how many people on the Olympic team? Three others. Three others. How many people are on the Olympic team from New York? Three, right? Two, two, two. two. Is Sabrina, Sabrina and, and, um, and Stewart. Is Connecticut got three? Well, somebody else got three. Um, Connecticut has one. No, Phoenix has three. It's Phoenix. There we go. Phoenix has three. So, yet Phoenix with three has a record that's a game and a half better than Indiana right now. Um, the whole thing is an absolute fucking joke. And they're the WNBA right now should be absolutely pissed. And I don't know how they didn't go to the Olympic Committee and say, You have got to put her on the team. <laughs> how? You did not, I mean, it is mind boggling that, that you did not put her on this team. That, that you have to. You're going to kill our momentum. Because right now, what would we t- we'd be talking about? We'd be talking about Caitlin Clark. Yes. And because I don't give a fuck about talking about Asia Wilson. I didn't watch but, the game. I'm but, not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch one singular women's game. But Caitlin Clark talking about her would have made us talk about everybody talk about else. else. <laughs> Simple math. One plus one well, yeah. equals two. I'll talk about you. You. It's the stupidest thing ever that the WNBA did not get more highly involved in this. Ah, yeah, bro, it, it, it's, it's I, a blown up. I'm flabbergasted. I'm flat. I'm still flabbergasted by it. Um, but now I hope she comes back massively energized and kicks the crap out of everybody. Yeah. Because the funny thing was, remember when she said to her dumbass coach who revealed it to the world, they woke a monster. That first game, she played with absolute trash. But since then, she's been the most dominant player in the league. Even more dominant than Asia Wilson. Uh, all right, Asia's putting up 28 and 15. I mean. Okay, for a season. Over the, since that happened. On that stretch, Asia was still putting up. In that. June, in June, in June. Caitlin Clark's averaging 20 and 12. That's ridiculous. And six rebounds. Caitlin Clark right now, and I know we're in a a salt box on Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark right now is 268th all time in assists. (laughs) She's, of the people who have had an assist in the WNBA, she is better than 62%. Of all the players in the history, the Yankees won, by the way. Oh. Seven six. Um, history of the WNBA. She is in this she's in the top thirty eight percent. I saw a post where it said that right now, of all the women who have ever played in the league, again I can't confirm it because I try to confirm it this way, she's in the top twenty five percent of all time. She's played twenty games, twenty five six games. games. She's played twenty six games. She has more assists this season than Lisa Leslie had in her career. <laughs> Lisa wasn't passing that shit. <laughs> like this is Lisa this wasn't is, passing that. Lisa got the ball. Lisa t- is, is the score. Yeah, but think about game. think about that. Think about that. Because Lisa played that's, about that's a long bananas. Break. But bro, that's bananas. Mm-hmm. I, I want to pull this crap up again. I saw this the other day, and I, I, Lisa played a long time. Yeah. Imagine if she got to play with fucking uh, Caitlin Clark. <laughs> All time assists. So right now, Sue Bird is all time leader in assists with 3,234. It took her like, I don't know, fucking almost 20 years. Yeah, Sue Bird played a long time. Sue Bird career is like five and a half assists. Caitlin Clark's going to destroy that number. She's going to be averaging 10. She's going to destroy that number Next right year, now. She'll average 11 assists a game. Unless she just. No, she'll still score more. Right now, she is number 268 with 213 assists. <laughs> she is right, and that's in 26 games. I'm going to read some names off. Maybe you recognize them, maybe you don't. Oh, Izzy Harrison, who I just mentioned from the Chicago Sky, is 278. Kennedy Carter in 75 games is 278. Um, I'm surprised she passed that much. <laughs> Kennedy, Kennedy is a scorer. Ah, Kennedy should never um, pass. Little AI. Uh, Katie Lou Samuelson, who Cheryl Soup says is more valuable to the Indiana Fever than Caitlin Clark, is 296. Nikki Blue, I remember she was a guard. Uh, I think she was a guard. I, mean, I, I know I want to find, I want to find some other names. That, that, like people understand, like this girl in a, in 26 games. Like this is, uh, it's crazy. I'm looking for some names here. I'm going to find a few. I know I saw Lisa Leslie. Aaliyah Boston is 324. She's not a point guard, obviously. Uh, da, 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 da. 
But that's Dijanae Carrington, uh, 348. She played she played 118 games. Uh, but think about Adrian Johnson. She played 181 games. She was a guard. She's a 350th. Do you remember Samika Randall who played for Tennessee in the 90s? No, I don't know. She played with Tamika Catchings and Shamika Holtzclaw. No, I don't she know. She was the dark black skin, dark, dark black girl with no. the short hair. Oh, God. She was a guard. I she, had, she, played, face. she played 123 games, 364. She's 364th. Oh, this is this, this but you remember Tracy Reed? Yeah. Played a central? Yeah. She played 116 games. She was 382nd. I wonder where your girl is. Who that? T- Tamara James. <laughs> Tamara got a couple years before. Jackie Styles. Remember that girl, Jackie Styles? She was the leading scorer in NCAA history at one point. 53 games. She's she's four for 45. <laughs> Short career, bro. <laughs> Short career. I, I, she's going to be in the top 100 in season two. Like, she's at 213 right now. <laughs> 213 right now. Let's look at what's... So she's got 14 games left. She averages a hundred, if she averages 10 a game the rest of the year, which she's pretty much been doing for the last month, that's another 140. That puts her at 350. That will have her. That will have her in the top 200. That'll have her 350. That would have her ranked at 173rd. In two in two seasons, she's going to be in the top hundred. Uh, Nine. Right now, if you look at their, their, their all-time simply, leaders. It's simply phenomenal what she's doing, man. Um, right now, the number 50. You know who number 50 is? It's Kelsey Plum. Okay. Kelsey Plum's played 221 games. She's got 900 assists. She's a point guard. She's a point guard. About four a game. She's a point guard. Four a game. She won't be at 900 in a season, but she'll be close to it. She'll probably be in the she'll be in the top hundred. Yeah, she'll be in she'll be close to that in two and a half years. Yeah, they decided to not have her play. I mean, hey, hey, man, that's it's... we told you you don't listen. No one watched. What's new? What? Well, some people watch as they well more people watch as this as the tournament goes on. Yeah, I presume they will. Are you? Um, are you shocked? But this is. Are you but shocked? this is where, huh? Are you shocked women not listening to men? Of course, that's normal. <laughs> That's normal. We're, 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 I mean, what are we talking about? Of course. I mean, women never listen to men. Men are always stupid, and women know everything, and that's how they act on ESPN, and um, God forbid a man says anything to them to make them actually use their fucking brains. No offense, ladies, but you know we think logically, and y'all think emotionally, and that's just what it is. You know, you're, too, you're being too goddamn sensitive about something, you're, something that you don't even own that you're trying to protect. Like, if you owned something, you had some stock in the situation, I could actually understand... You wanted to protect it, but you have no stock. The stock is the product. Your success as a commentator, as a broadcaster, as a hot take pundit, all that shit is predicated on that woman. Because before her, none of y'all mattered. Nobody cared. Remember they Nobody said, cared. When they used to have the uh the ESPN first take with the the whole women panel or women's first Turn take. Turn it off, bro. Turn it off. <laughs> watch that shit. <laughs> No, I didn't watch that shit. I still don't want to watch it. It's like nails on chalkboard. Because then, because then Molly Karen tries to talk about some shit like oh, this. She has man. To she's, she's the worst for me. I, like listening to her when she when when UConn's doing something. It's like, did you? She, I'm not. I'm sure you went to UConn games because there's literally nothing to do there. But she she interrupts with the. Where were you for the last five years before they were making these runs? Now because they weren't doing shit for she, a few years. She interrupts like conversations to hop in. With the worst thing to say, and she stopped Stephen A. And I, Stephen A. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say he's right all the time, but most times it'll be a conversation that don't need her, <laughs> or her point that doesn't make any sense. What's, what's who, who, who's the name on the show? Stephen A. Smith. It's my show. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're not here to talk. You're here to be a cute face. No disrespect. And you're here to be a topic, cute face bum, bum, bum. To, 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 to moderate yeah. and bring us through. You're not here for your opinion. Your opinion to the national audience is absolutely irrelevant. If you want to give your opinion, start a podcast. Because we don't know what you're, I mean, 
I know Stephen A. Smith had a one day college basketball career, but man's been covering professional sports for more than half more than half his life. Who the hell were you before you even got on first take? I don't even know. Oh, you I'm sorry, you married Jalen Rose. Um and then you got divorced from Jalen Rose. You you don't bring anything they, that that seat has been revolving over the years. People typically leave that seat because they matriculate. Why has she not matriculated out of that chair? Comfortable. Or she's just not that good. Or she couldn't can't speak about sports like she thinks. Who are the people that have who the, who are the people that have sat in that chair before her? Gary Wolf. You remember? Gary Champions. Who? Uh Joy. No, Joy's on F was on. She was on Undisputed. Yeah, she was on. No, she was with Colin Cowell. She was with Colin Cowell. Yeah, she was on Cowell. And she was she was undisputed, undisputed also. also. Um let's see who they were. What's okay, up? we had initially it was a guy. It was Jay Crawford, yeah. Dana Jacobson, Rashia Canada. I don't even know who that is. Carrie Champion was for four years. Carrie Cha- all these people graduate. Why haven't you graduated? The show's great. I know in ratings and your your job is safe. Maybe she's okay with it. If you're okay with it, cool. But most people, Joy Taylor on First Undisputed, Colin Coward, Speak. She's got her own podcast as, as nails on chalkboard as it is. I'm sure you've seen it. It's nothing but a nonstop diss on men, um, <laughs> realistically, which is why both those women are single. Um, well, but at, at almost 40. Um, or they or they value their careers a lot. Also, as much as women say that, also they still don't want to be single. But yeah, they don't let's keep it real. Let's keep it. A, but yeah, let's man, keep, let's let's keep it a buck. Like you're 37 years old, you typically want to have a husband and or children by this point. Children and a husband. Um, but nonetheless, you she graduated. She's graduated. She has had a radio show and all that. She's done a lot of stuff. I don't want to hear Molly Kerm talk when she's on first take, other than to moderate. Because when she's, she interrupts, as you mentioned, it's like. Ooh, and, and, and other people used to interrupt with what? valid points, like it made sense. Like, I, if she, it was good and valid, I'll, be, I'll take her hopping in and doing her thing. Just like my guy on um, First Thing First, who became like, he's great to me. Greenberg? No, Greenie? no, on First Thing First. Thing first um. Oh, that's Jay, uh, Nick Wright? Not or Nick the other Wright, guy. but... Oh, uh, uh, the other guy. The, the, the dude with the nice Wiles, hair. Wiles. Kevin Wiles. Yeah, yeah, Kevin yeah. Kevin Wiles is freaking... Yeah, he, knows, he knows what he's talking about. Amazing. He's amazing. Yeah, I'm sexist. Men know what we're talking about in sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay. Until you prove it to me. Mm-hmm. Prove it to me. I'm Yeah, I'm going to be that way. I'm, I'm 46 years old, man. I'm 46, man. I don't give a shit. You, you prove it to me. Prove, me. prove to me the knowledge that you claim to have. If I give you a quiz, can you pass that quiz? I remember this show called, it was Mr. Big League, the little, where well, this kid was, became the owner of the team at 12 because his grandpa died. Did you ever see that movie? No. The Minnesota Twins? Well, he was the owner of the team. He makes himself the manager. He makes himself okay. the manager of the team. He fires the manager and makes himself the manager. And the GM and the assistant, assistant coach go, go, you know, go to him and like, Tell me what you – oh, no, actually, I'm sorry. The the manager did it. Yep. He says to him, what would you do here? And the kid literally lays exactly out what he would do. And the – and the and the, so he gave him, like, a whole bunch of possibilities. Yep. And the manager at the end says, so what the hell do you need me here for? You're right. You're fired. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you're fired. Bye. Pack your shit. I'll be the coach now. Yeah. Because this is – because – Dude, I'm when I was a kid, I watched sports like there was nothing on television. Yeah. That's all I watched. Yes. Like it didn't matter. I watched everything. Now I'm a little bit more reserved. Even though I have all these TVs, I still don't watch like I watched when I was a kid. Like when I was in high school, we would leave this classroom for March Madness and go to the coach's office yeah. to watch March Madness. When it was on one television channel. Only on CBS, we would we would leave class. They would like, Coach, I need to come to your office. Come on. <laughs> uh, this sh- I don't want to hear what she got to say when Stephen A. Smith's arguing with somebody else. 
I don't know if you want to hear. I don't want to hear it. The last week when he got fucking hit, hit by freaking Drea Carter, um, and, and um, Cheney, and when he was on that thing with with Drea Carter, when he talked about how, you know, the marketing and how, I said all this last week. You guys got mad at me. And Molly says, "Well, you deserved it." Uh, yeah, you deserved she, it. She hopped in. You deserved it. You were like, what are you talking about? Like, you were wrong. You were like, y'all wrong. were wrong. Like, y'all were wrong. And you won't admit you were wrong. Like, you deserved it. Like, no, I told you <laughs> why she should be on the team. And I made my point valid about it was marketing. And, like, I don't because give a damn about anything else y'all talking about. She should be on the roster. Andrea Carter changed her entire tune as to why she wasn't on the team now. It changed. I will not sacrifice my integrity in basketball. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no. You already did because you chose someone that's not better than the people that are that you chose people that were not better than the person who's not on the team. Quite frankly, Arike Gumbawale should be on that team too. You saw her in the freaking All Star game. Well, she's like, like she has her hot and cold. She's but she's but but if she's playing with ballers, you'd be open. Yeah. Man. Anyhow, folks, that's all we got for tonight. We went on our two hour freelance version of this podcast. I thought we were doing it live. I don't think we ever went live, to be honest. <laughs> but um, we're going to try again next week. But yeah, man, it's been a great night. And uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now. Sir. <laughs>